Non-communicable diseases are diseases that can't be transmitted from one organism to another. They're usually caused by some type of internal situation in the body. There are a few categories of non-communicable diseases, and we're going to explore those. First one is degenerative. This is when some body part functions improperly. It can be due to age or wear or tear or something's just not working right. Maybe the uh, cells actually did not divide appropriately and then there's some mistake with that. Traumas are another example of non-communicable diseases. They're the result of various accidents and injuries. Some examples would be like frostbite, heat stroke, carpal tunnel, food poisoning, uh, brain aneurysm, all of these things cannot be caught from the individual. They're due to some kind of trauma. We have deficiency diseases, which means they lack some type of agent in their body. And a good example is rickets here. Uh, if you don't get vitamin D in your uh, body, you cannot absorb calcium appropriately. It won't get in very effectively, and therefore it will cause the softening of the bones and all sorts of problems. That way, in our society, we have... Uh, fortified vitamin D and, and milk. Um, there's other things such as iron deficiency and this could be anemia and we could go on and on. Hereditary disease where there's an improper genetic condition that's being passed on from the mother or father. A good example here is hemophilia which is a recessive gene carried on the X chromosome. Uh, hemophiliacs of course are not uh, able to make appropriate platelets that can work right to stop their bleeding. There's all sorts of hereditary diseases out there. This is just an example. And then we have some type of immune system problems. So we're going to look at some of those problems associated with your immune system. The autoimmune system diseases, of course, this is when the white blood cells are attacking itself. Here on the diagram, we have several forms of uh, autoimmune disease. Uh, for some reason, the, the white blood cells don't recognize their very own cells and they'll attack and destroy them. In type 1 diabetes, of course, the, uh, the baby, when it's born, uh, the white blood cells attack the, uh, attack the pancreas and then the pancreas can't produce insulin. And we have like rheumatoid arthritis is where the uh, white blood cells attack the person's joints and actually tear them apart and, and they start rebuilding calcium in places where they're being torn apart. We see all sorts of deformities in fingers and the like. There's several different kinds of them out there. And then we have allergies. With allergies, of course, the body thinks that anything that's passing in their system could actually be a pathogen of some kind, whether it be pollen grain or something of this nature, dust. Uh, we've done some things for them, developed some medications to cause their system to not be so um, souped up and we've g given them shots with some of the allergens in it that, that would slowly get their body used to it and there's all sorts of education we're developing over time. There's drops now that they use under their tongue and uh, we know foods to avoid and of this nature. We also have tissue organ transplant. Sometimes a patient will get an organ from a donor and uh, they won't have the same cell surface markers and then their body will start destroying the organ itself. Um, we have to make sure we match the two together so it's close enough and we'll also give the give the uh, patient some drugs that will weaken their immune system a little bit so it won't attack the organ but that's another problem associated with the immune system.